The objective of this video is to show how to apply dynamic formatting, which allows you to apply different kinds of formats for different levels of a hierarchy, member ID or properties, banding on the rows or columns, and formatting the page access dimensions as headings. You can still use standard Excel formatting. The formatting of the report will be retained if the worksheet is refreshed. However, it will not be retained if you expand or collapse your report, or if you make a change through the settings. Therefore, it is recommended to use dynamic formatting so that your formatting will always be retained. Create a new report. Put time in the columns, accounts in the rows, and audit in the page access. Ensure that the account is showing parent and descendant of the net income and that we have a number of time periods across the top. Apply some suppression to the rows if necessary and remove the indentation on the rows. So to create the dynamic formatting, you need to click on View Formats from the EPM ribbon. This will unhide a sheet within your current workbook called EPM Formatting Sheet. All new workbooks created in Excel when logged on to BPC have this hidden sheet. If we look at the sheet that has opened, you will see that it is broken down into four sections. Hierarchy level formatting, specific or property formatting, branding formatting, and page access formatting. You can use one section or all four sections. You just need to remember that you must turn on the section by selecting the tick box. This will then apply that formatting section. Formatting is applied by starting at the top and then working your way down the page through all of the sections. Each line is applied and so if a cell is impacted by more than one formatting line, it will end up with the formatting of the last line applicable. The hierarchy level formatting allows formatting based on the hierarchy. The tick boxes beside each line show which formatting will be turned on. So by default, we have both default formats in rows and columns, and level hierarchy formatting on columns. The rows show what will be formatted, and then the columns are the formats that will be applied split between the data and the header. Data is referring to the data grid and header are the members in the reports. In terms of the formatting, we just need to format the cells as we would expect them to be seen in the report. Everything will apply background color, font size, font color, bold and borders to name a few. There is also the ability to use conditional formatting on the formatting sheet. First of all, if we click Priority to Row Format at the top, we will see that the Row section moves below the Column section. This shows how the formatting starts at the top and works downwards, meaning the formatting of the rows is done after the formatting of the columns, potentially overwriting the format of certain cells if the formatting of the columns and rows overlap. We will change the default format of the column to give the data a blue background and a white font color. And then the same again to the header. Then apply the formatting on specific level and change the format of the data for each level to have varying shades of green with white font. Then the same again to the headers. We can see that if we go back to our report worksheet 
and click refresh. Nothing happens. This is because dynamic formatting has yet to be applied. Therefore, we must go to the sheet options, go to the formatting tab, and select apply dynamic formatting, ensuring that the dynamic formatting sheet is the sheet that we want. If we now go back to our report worksheet and click refresh, we will notice that the formatting of the report changes to correspond with the choices of the EPM formatting sheet. We can see that the only column headers have changed to become different shades of green, depending on the member's level. This has happened due to our dynamic formatting sheet having priority formatting on the rows. This means that initially the sheet will have changed colour, correspond with the colour selected for the columns. But this has been overwritten by the default format in the row section. This has set all the data back to default background and font colour. If we deselect formatting on a specific level, then go back to our report page and click refresh, we can see that the column headers turn blue. This is because the default formatting is no longer being overwritten by the formatting of the higher priority formatting on specific level selection. Now if we apply a default format for the rows with a different colour, and then go back to the report page and click refresh. We will see that all of the rows have been formatted with this color. We can also see that the column headers have not changed. If we now apply the formatting on specific level for the rows and change the color of the specific levels to different shades of gray, this formatting will have priority over all other formatting because we have selected priority to the rows. If we go back to our report worksheet and click refresh, We will notice that the formatting of all the rows changes to reflect this. Further down the sheet, we can see the darker grey effect appearing on the higher level members. If we go back to our dynamic formatting sheet and click on Priority to Columns, then go back to our report worksheet. By refreshing the sheet, we can see that the columns are formatted with the blue colour selected as the default format with white text. If we instead apply the formatting on specific levels and click refresh, we can see that dynamic formatting has been applied. This has resulted in the higher level using a darker green, level 1, and the lower levels to use the lighter green, which we can see in the formatting sheet. In the Dimension Member Property Formatting section, you can choose a specific format for a specific type of member, either a custom, calculated, imputable, or changed, or you put a format in for a specific member. Remember you need to turn on this section by ticking the box. And then you need to also tick the Apply box for the line you would like to use. You need to make sure that we are in the rows and the rows have priority. We are going to format a specific member. By selecting specific member, we can format based on the member, local members or blank members. We can use properties and we can also do an intersection. Select the account dimension. Find the member we would like to format, operating income. Click OK and you will notice it has been added to the list. 
We can now format as before. Red with white for both the data and the label. Then head back to the report sheet to refresh the sheet. Moving on to row and column banding. This is to replicate the table formatting from Excel. Remembering to tick the box in the header and change the priority to the row format. We will apply to the row odd formatting. A yellow background with dark blue. Bold font for both the data and the header. After refreshing the sheet, we can see the report is formatted with the row and column banding and also with the odd formatting, as the first row is yellow and the second row is white. Finally, the page axis formatting. This can be done for all members, or you can specify a different format for each member in the page axis, remembering to tick the box in the header. We will apply a default format of a red background with a white bold font. When we go back and refresh the report, we can see the page axis has been formatted in this way. If we double click on the Use column, you can see that a screen appears that allows you to select what formatting you would like to use from the cell. So you could format your default with a specific border, which would not be overwritten if you choose to take the font color. You can also set it to none, and no format will be picked up. This is useful if you want to format the data differently to the header and for example the header is done on default. Once you have created a formatting sheet you are happy with, you could copy it into another spreadsheet with normal Excel functionality. You can also have more than one formatting sheet per workbook. The trick to formatting is to remember the tick boxes, and then that it starts at the top and works its way down. I would suggest creating a report and playing around with the formatting to see how it works. I hope you have found this tutorial helpful.